All right, so in the last video, I said that I wanted to have a different kind of setup. So if I go into build mode, as you can see, I can place it all the way around. But if I turn, it is kind of attached. And this is what I want to avoid. I do not want that to happen because, again, it's a component. So it's a child of my actor. So as I turn, rotate my actor, this is going to rotate with it. So I want to have this as a dedicated actor that is local to the client. Because I don't know if I'm going to go into multiplayer in this series or not. I may have that as kind of like a separate branch where we convert this to a multiplayer feature. I feel like that would be kind of cool to really show people how they can take things from single player into multiplayer, but we'll just have to see. Anyways, let's go ahead and make that actor. I already know it's going to open up Visual Studio for me, so that's going to be annoying. But anyways, let's go to public, create a new C++ class of the type actor, next. And let's give this a name of build building visual and create the class. Alrighty, mine's done, and that's gonna get kind of annoying because that's not gonna go away, but let's open up our building visual.h and .cpp. So here we're gonna kind of do the same thing that we had in the character with the mesh component. So let's first off do what we always do and remove tick and set it to false. Obviously it's, no, it's just not needed. And we're gonna know we have to include the components at mesh component.h. Alright, I got distracted there for a little while. Uh, so we've included a static mesh component, and we've disabled tick. Okay. Uh, now we want to continue on and set up the actual, well, the static mesh component, such as what we have here. So let's copy that and paste it somewhere into the header. I'll just do it right here. I'm not too worried about keeping this organized. As again, this is just a tutorial, and there's not going to be a whole lot of code that really is going to be driven here. And then next up, we obviously have to do that in the constructor like so, and we want to set this as the root, so root component equals build mesh. Okay, so we are pretty much set up. Uh, I would like to have just kind of a helper function, so to speak, so in perform line trace, let's see, set, where's tick? So basically I'll be kind of handling it all of inside of here, so this logic's going to be in there. So what I'm going to do is set up a public section And I'm going to do, let's say, uh, void set actor. All right, let's do set build position. And inside of here, actually, I want to make it take in the hit result. So we're going to do f hit result. We're going to do it by reference hit result. And we're not making any changes, so we're going to make that a constant. Alrighty. Create the definition, let's head back over here. And we're basically, what we're gonna be doing is passing this function as the parameter into set build position. So for locally on begin play, we wanna spawn this actor and give us give ourselves a pointer to it. So what we can do, instead of build mesh, we're gonna have it as build actor. So I cannot, I don't know if I want this to be a new property or not, but we'll make it blueprint read only anyways. And we're going to or declare it as class a building visual. Let's do uh, let's just do build build actor or building actor. No, that's not a good name. What should this really be called? Uh we'll just call it builder. Something like that should actually be pretty okay. Alright, once we have that, let's go to our base building character dot h or dot cpp find our begin play which does this not have one by default i am guessing not so let's create that real quick so we're going to do a virtual void begin play and make sure to override it make sure to call super on it as well and from here we can spawn it so what we're going to do is builder equals get world spawn actor the type is going to be building visual or a building visual and then we just need a class that we can you know use for it because by default uh, i'm not going to be assigning it in c++ as to which mesh to have by default instead i want to do that inside of blueprint and set all the variables by blueprint so we need to set a way to get that blueprint class to know which one does actually go through and spawn. 
So we can remove build mesh, and this is where we're going to actually do it. So we're going to have edit defaults only and set it right in here. So that's going to be a T subclass of class A building visual. And this is going to be our building class. And because we're using this more than once, I usually like to remove the forward declaration and move it all the way to the top, like so. So now we have the building class. So let's paste that in there. And before we do that, we're going to do if building class, just to confirm that it is set beforehand and valid. Then we can set it up, spawn it, and use it. So now that we have that set up, we can remove all this logic out of our tick, remove this from set build mode, because we're going to be doing something else instead. So we're just going to remove those two. And let's handle the set build mode first. So we're going to start from the top and work our way down. And let's remove the create default sub object as well. So let's, we need a function to easily hide and unhide this. So I'm just going to do a void set hidden. Uh, let's see, actually, no, we do have directly set actor hidden game. So that's not too big of a deal. So if build, yeah, if builder, then I want to hide and unhide. So we're going to do builder set actor hidden in game. So this went ahead and included building visual for us. So included building visual.h, which is our own class. So if set actor hidden in game, or sorry, if it were in the build mode, we want to make sure we unhide it. So we're going to set actor hidden in game to false. And then otherwise, we're going to do the opposite and set it to true because we want it to be hidden. Then from here, we do the exact same thing kind of down in tick, just with the exception of the hidden part. And what we do is if be in build mode and builder, we want to do builder set build position and we pass in our perform line trace function call. So that'll get our hit result and everything for us. And from there, inside of building visual.cvp, the only thing I want to do now is let's do a hidden that actor hidden game. There should be a boolean, I thought, for this. We're going to set it to true. Let's see, there should be... Is there not? Let's check uh, the actual actor class. So is this accessible? No, that's private. So do we have... Private, set actor hidden game. And there, I am not seeing any directly accessible variables for this. So we're going to run this, I guess, just to be safe and begin play. So set actor hidden in game is set to true and begin play. So on the initial spawning of this actor. So that'll kind of handle that for us there. And okay, uh, we should be good to go. Let's go ahead and do a test here. So we're gonna close down the editor and relaunch. Alrighty, I went ahead and reopened up everything. And under third person character, we should have under here tutorial building class. So we have it set to building visual right now. Let's go ahead and create a blueprint copy or a blueprint class off of building visual. Go into tutorial and call it BP underscore building visual. Now here for build mesh, we're going to do the foundation and I believe that's all we have actually set up so far. So let's go to the, our character real quick and set the building class to be BP underscore building visual. Save all and hit play. Make sure we're good to go. Press B. All right, let's press B again. I'm not seeing it. Is it in the center of the world? Let's check the outliner. We have BP building visual. So we do have it. However, it is not, or it is currently hidden. At least that's my assumption. So let's go ahead and check out and see what might be the cause of that. So by default, I'm actually going to 
comment out the set hidden in game. Where we did that in the uh, begin play. Press B. Still no luck. All right. Is it still hidden for some reason? Yes, it is. Okay, so I'm just going to relaunch one more time with that commented out and just make sure that that's not the reason why. All right, hit play again. Press F8. There it is. Okay, so when I press B to go into building mode, visual, when I press B again to stop, it's hidden. Okay, so I got them. I think I just got myself confused and backwards. So let's check our set build mode. So set actor hidden in game. When we're in build mode, we want that to be false. Set actor hidden. False. Yeah, that seems correct. And then we want it to be... Why does that seem backwards to me? And stupid me actually just realized I can clean this up by using the uh, our boolean that we have right now as well. So if we are in build mode, we want this to be false. We're going to do the opposite of be in build mode. Okay, press F8. There it is. Press B to go into build mode. Go there, press B to stop. It's hidden. Press B again. And it's visual. Okay, so we're good to go and working. So I got myself a little confused there. So inside of set build mode, now we're just doing if the builder is valid, we set actor hidden in game to be the opposite of whatever B in build mode is. So that way we can get the result directly from it. Now we got to do the set build position, and I'm going to uncomment out set actor hidden in game. So in our tick, we call set build position, form the line trace, yada, yada, yada. Uh, I'm just going to hold down control Z here to show you kind of what all we did. And so I can copy and paste lazily. Did I already strip that out of tick? No, I did not. So all we're doing is setting the world location to the impact points hit location. So let me just redo. So we set actor location to the hit result dot location like so and if we ever if we wish we could also use the actor's rotation as well to kind of influence the rotation but i'm not really too concerned about that at the moment but we have that set let's go ahead and do live coding press b and there we go Woo. So we have the issue of, let's see, that may be collision. Let's see, when I lift you up, why were you floating? Unless it's just due to the delay of it moving, maybe? Ah, collision. Whoa, crap. <laughs> okay, so we have a collision issue. So let's go to our <laughs> building visual. Go to our build mesh and we're going to scroll down to our collision preset and set that to no collision let's compile and save that go into building mode and there we go that is much much smoother and then when i'm not in one as you can see it hides it you can toss it right on an object and all that okay so, let's say I got myself a little bit backwards here. So basically we're good to go. However, I want to do the uh, set actor hidden in game part on the tick. Where is tick? Right here. So currently we are only doing a check to see if we're not seeing if anything's actually being hit. So what's happening is when we do not have a valid hit, we have an empty vector. So we're not actually hiding the actor. Instead, what we're doing is we are placing it at the world origin so we want to do that check again so if hit result dot b blocking hit we want to do this and otherwise we want to hide it so set actor hidden in game we want that to be true and then up here just to be safe we're going to set it to false make sure that it unhides itself because this is just a temporary actor that's used for building 
nothing more, so I'm not too concerned about it. So I press B. There we go. I look up. It disappears. So if I press F8, it's no longer at the world origin. It is instead just hidden. And I guess it probably wouldn't hurt to uh, clean up the collision box. But anyways, we're going to have some form of uh, snapping. So it's not too big of a concern. Because I don't want to have you know, the ability to really do this. And we're going to change it from a line trace to probably some sort of sphere trace instead. So that way, for example, as you're getting near it, you can have the option to, one, we're going to check and see if anything's overlapping or intersecting. Two, we want to build a, as we get close, I want to build a snap to a socket. So if there's a socket that exists, like I said, I want to build a kind of snap to the closest socket that is within X distance. Or just to make it maybe a little bit easier, snap within the range of the sphere. Okay, once we have that, what I also want to do is I want to set the actor rotation to, well, actually, I don't think any of that information is stored anywhere. You know, there's no transform or anything like that. So I guess that's not too big of a deal, and this would kind of keep everything on a straight building plane. But if you wanted to have the ability to really easily rotate, what you could do as well is pass in the rotation of the camera and apply that or use your actor's rotation. That's just kind of other things that you can go about and do. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to keep this as a kind of like a 90 degree building or just a straight building. So as you can see, no matter what I do, it's not going to rotate. It's just going to stay completely straight. So I think that's probably going to be the best route for this. Is keep, it's going to keep it a little bit simpler too. So anyways, that is going to be all for this video. We now have kind of our building kind of thing good to go. So now that this is over, I will see you in the next video. If you like what I'm doing and you want to help support me, you can find a link to my Patreon down in the description below, where I have a Team Deathmatch series just for patrons, as well as you get early access to pretty much all of my videos. If you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to join my Discord that's also linked down below, and I'll try to help you out. So I'll see you in the next video.